no luck whatsoever, which feels like a win because that includes bad luck. There is no bad luck. They did not move down. Uh, they stay at eight. Um, but Gator, Montreal, who is the worst team in hockey, gets the number one overall pick. God, what's that like to be the worst team in hockey and get the number one overall pick? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I know what it's like to be the worst team in hockey, but I don't know what it's like to get the number one pick with it. You know, it's funny because yesterday somebody called and said, I don't really care. Steve Eisenman's the GM. And I'm like, got it. Yep. Check. All hail Steve Eisenman, right? We're on board. However, ask Steve Eisenman which pick he wants. <laughs> ask Steve Eisenman eight or one. Yeah. Eight or two. And you know, I think he, I think he'd take one or two. I like having Steve Eisenman at the helm making these decisions. That's that's pretty good. Yep. You know, go back in my lifetime that I can think. I mean, Red Wings had the number one pick in 1986, and they took Joe Murphy mm-hmm. from Michigan State. Michigan yep. State had just won the championship. They, they drafted Joe Murphy, and Joe Murphy was okay. He certainly wasn't what you were hoping for with the number one pick. Um, they. They only had that pick because I believe Eiserman got hurt the year before. Is that right? Um, because that led to so actually it may not be true, but they, they ended up getting a, from that point on. That's Things when they started being blurry. really com- yeah. They got really competitive from that point on, despite whiffing on the number one pick overall. Right. And then they they had the draft that it was the 1990 draft. They took Keith Primo, and they passed on Yermir Yager. And it passed on a host of other guys that had Hall of Fame careers or near Hall of Fame careers. Mark Tambrador was in that draft, I believe, and Darian Hatcher and just a bunch of really, really great players. Red Wings took Keith Primo. Keith Primo, again, decent career. Yep. It was okay, uh, but was thrown together in part of a bigger trade that ended up netting the Red Wings' Brendan Shanahan. So I guess the point is you can draft at the top of the draft – totally whiff and still be okay or find a way to get your to to get better. Yeah. And the Red Wings have done that in their in their past. Yeah. Um now recently would have had these top picks. I like Raymond. I like Cider. No need to move on from that. You know, mm-hmm. but is Zadina is this going to be a reclamation project here or is Zadina going to be the next Joe Murphy, that you, you know, the piece that might have some talent and you trade away. Helps a little bit, but yeah. I mean, it, it, important to remember, and I know you're not implying this, but Zadina is obviously not on the record of Steve Eisenman. He no, was he's a not. Ken Holland draft pick. Um, but Eisenman, so what has he got? Three. He's got Cider, he's got Raymond, and he's got Edvinson, Edvinson who may, may be with the big club next year. Yeah. Um, but I, so they're picking eighth. And before I looked at a mock draft, I, I'm instinctively, you tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Yeah. I went and looked at who the top rated Swedish player was. Oh sure. I'm yeah. like I'm like I did two things. I looked at the top rated Swedish player and I looked at the roster to see if there was any player from Rogel. Cuz it seems like the right. Red Wings always have guys from Rogel. And you came up with the name Bent Yarglestad. <laughs> <laughs> Close. We got the top rated player from Sweden is a center named Jonathan Leckermarkey. That's as Swedish as it comes. Yep. And so I went and watched his highlights because mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, well, let's yeah. check out this Leckermarkey. And uh, I was underwhelmed. I went in wanting to be whelmed, hoping to be, yeah, whelmed, hoping to be whelmed. And I was not were, whelmed at all. I was, under, I was completely underwhelmed. underwhelmed. Um, but there is, <laughs> of course, dude, There, of course, I, I started, okay, let's look at the prospects. And there is somebody from Rogel. And I'm like, of course, there's Marco Kesper from Rogel. He's a center. And William Wallander is there. And Theodore Niederbacher is there. Niederbach is there. These are all Red Wing prospects. prospects. Most Sider was there. I feel like the Red I mean, they've got this Rogel pipeline working, so maybe they'll (laughs) (laughs) They'll go get uh, Marcus Kesper. Uh, But here's my early flag plant. Yeah. It's Yurav Slavkowski. From Slovakia, he was the MVP of the Olympics. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. So that's 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 my early flag plant. I haven't really done a, a – I, I started to look a little bit – I'm not going to lie. I started to look a little bit yesterday at mm-hmm. the uh, top North American skaters and the top uh, European skaters. And the first thing that I, I try to look for is to see some kind of eye-opening stat. You know, like you see 
hey, they played in 53 games and had 117 points. Like, whoa, that's, there we go. I like to see stuff like that. Two point a game stuff. You don't see a whole lot of that from this class. Um, then the next thing will be, okay, how about goals? I want a goal a game guy. Any, any of those? No, those guys don't exist. Right. Then I, my next go-to is height. <laughs> I want big guys. Unfortunately, the, the taller guys in this draft are like, well, they're 18. So they're bean poles. They're like, right. you might find somebody who's 6'4 or 6'5. There's one guy who's 6'7, but it's like 6'7 and 178. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, or 6'4 or and 190. Good in the low post. Needs a little work on his ball <laughs> yeah. handling. It's like Chet Holmgren's playing. Yeah, no, no, no perimeter game. Right. So I'm, I'm also lacking whelm when it comes to the draft so yeah. far now th things will change as you get you know i'll do more uh, research on it and then i'll probably come up with a neighbor two of guys that I, I would like to see them look at but in the end steve eisman still has the cash yeah, where you trust him yeah do it do your thing i mean that's it took a slight hit this year a slight hit but i think people reason that away easily by going flash is full Blash's fault. I got fired, and it's Blash's fault. Let me give you two things that happened, two names All right. that happened this year that helped tell the tale of why the Red Wings weren't all that good again. Okay. One is Verona was hurt right away. Didn't help. Okay, and when he came back, he was really good. Okay. Most goals by a Red Wing through his first whatever games it was in, in, in Red Wing history, right? Yep. Nice stat to have when he got healthy and was ready to play. But they played without him for... 50, 60 games, whatever it is. That's a big hit. Yep. The other one was Robbie Fabry. That kind of goes under the radar. You forget Robbie Fabry, was a, he's a good player. He's not a great player. He's a good player. He's a solid player. Mm -hmm. Solid two-way player. And he missed a good portion of the season as well. Yeah. That's kind of big. Now, those are two offensive guys, and the biggest problem with the Red Wings was their defense. But, you know, sometimes the best defense can be a good offense. And they needed more offensive help. They needed more pucks in the net. What would this team have been like if both of those guys were healthy the whole season? How much better would they have been? They would have been better. I mean, look, there's not a playoff team, but yeah. how much better would they have been? I mean, it would be nice to see them 100% healthy and 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 what they're what be everything that they can be and have no setbacks and some good luck. I mean, you're not always going to be 100% healthy, so counting on that is foolish, but at the end of the day, this is not how they were supposed to look. Um and you know, get another good player in this draft and let Eisenman do his thing. 